Hello, Exeter. And today in the spotlight, we have Joe Galvin. Yes. <laughs> so you're the Krypton <laughs> Comics man, the comic book store yes. owner, um, or one of the three. At least that's what it seemed like on the card. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's basically me. Basically yeah. you. Yeah, I put them on because they asked. Just, <laughs> just to be on a business card, apparently. I don't know why. One of them is my son, one of them is my nephew. Yeah. <laughs> who, you know, in the beginning was supposed to be, you know, part of the helping out, but I haven't seen them in about eight years, so <laughs> that never worked out. It's actually Crypt, what do we call it? Krypton Pop Culture Emporium. Okay. But it, it got okay. shortened to, to Krypton Comics because it's just, you know, easier to say, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can you see know. that. <clears throat> yeah. Instead of you know. the Krypton Emporium. Yeah, because it's, cause it's, you know, primarily... Well, no, it's sort of mixed up between vintage comics and vintage toys and new toys. So I didn't want it to be just like a comic book shop because it's really not. It's part of it, but it's not, you know. Because you can go into a comic book store and it's primarily comics. So we wanted to mix it up. So Yeah. So you wanted more than that. You wanted, uh, it looks like you sell a lot of like very vintage stuff. So like original magazines from the 50s or... Um, yeah. Posters. Yeah, we do, you know, we have our own vinyl room that has, you know, vintage posters in it, vintage vinyl, we have vintage lunch boxes, vintage toys, you know, so we, that's sort of the direction I was heading in when I opened it anyways. I mean, I kind of got the idea from, because uh, I had retired from my real job, and, uh, you know, the Big Bang Theory, right? Yeah. The TV show, you know, the comic book store they always go in and think, I'm like, that looks like fun. That's kind of how I got the idea, honestly. I'm like, that'd be cool to hang out. If you own one, that's even better, you know? So that's yeah. kind of how I kind of figured out, well, let's see, what can I do here? And, you know, they got toys and stuff in there. And I'm thinking, oh, that'd be kind of cool. And then I'm like, a downtown would be nice. You know, have people just come in off the street and walk in and stuff like that. So, yeah. yeah it's kinda who doesn't like talking about pop culture? Well, that's it, because there's so much between the movies and the TV shows and all that stuff and you know the Marvel Universe it's it, it exploded you know I kind of got lucky honestly because when I opened up they were just sort of starting those those movies and things like that um, and after a couple of years it's just everywhere so yeah so it became you know busy nice <laughs> all right so uh, you got any like original Beatles records yes ever come in? Like first edition prints? Yes. Meet the Beatles, Introducing the Beatles, The Hard Day's Night soundtrack. Oh, yeah, we got all that stuff in there. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, it's good stuff. Nice. Yeah. Anything come in with like uh, buy, buy your Beatles boots when those were a trend? Um, those posters? I don't think I've seen that one. <laughs> Although they did make, you know, Beetle boots. You know, they called them that. Yeah, you could actually buy them. And yeah, oh, they... The whole Beatles thing, uh, company just went crazy on merchandising that band. I mean, they were smart to do it because a lot of, you know, they weren't doing a lot of that back in the 60s. Mm -hmm. But somebody, you know. Somebody came up with Some company, prob probably their manager, so I'm guessing. Because their original manager owned a record store. So he sort of knew the retail part of it. Mm -hmm. um, so I think he probably came up with, hey, we can merchandise you guys, you know, once they got hot, you know. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Interesting. So there's always a bunch of, so you, you probably like never run out of interesting things that you find like in pop culture because like something may have been big at one point. You find all these little products, um, end results of whatever was its popularity. Yeah, I mean like a lot of things will, will come around, you know, um, you know, stuff from the 50s and, you know, 60s, 70s. Um, so, you know, things still come in the door. I'm like, I didn't even know they made that. You know what I mean? Because I'm like, I never seen one. Um, and if something's really popular, like say like uh, Masters of the Universe, the He-Man line, when mm -hmm. something is popular like that, when you were a kid in the 80s, they remake it. Like Walmart just remade all the He-Man line. That whole 80s line, they did the whole thing over again. Because 80s right now is probably the most popular thing in the store. 
because those kids that were kids in the 80s, little kids, mm -hmm. they're now in their you know, 30s and 40s. You know, they have you know, some income, they're working, and they want their toys back. So they come in and try to collect it again. And that's where I come in. <laughs> I get man. those things for you know, people like that. Yeah. yeah, nice. So uh, did you ever, do you, ever have a, do you have any stories where you, you actually found something that someone actually had when they were a child and returned it to it, like they, they reacquired it? Um, you mean like somebody that came in and said, listen, I had this as a kid, can you find me that? Yeah. Yes, I've had that happen. Oh, cool. Yeah, I had that happen. A, a woman came in and she was looking for this particular doll she had as a kid. And I knew that, you know, what the doll was because I had seen it before. And she's, you know, and her daughter was in there with her. And her birthday was coming. There's a whole thing about it. So I, so I talked to the daughter on the side. I said, listen, I'll, I'll get this for you, but I'll tell her that I probably can't find it. She goes, oh, that'd be great. <laughs> so, so I did. I found it for her. This doll from the 60s she had as a kid. She walked around with it, all this stuff. So, so I found it for her, and I contacted the daughter. And she came in and bought it. And then her and the mom came back in a week later. Mom's carrying the thing around, and she's crying. And she's like, I can't believe you found this, and this is the best thing ever. Yeah, so that stuff does happen. Okay. Yeah, it was cool. It was a nice moment, touching moment, you know? Yeah. So that's what makes the store fun. But, you know, I mean, people will walk in and say, I had that lunchbox when I was in third grade. You know, whether it's, you know, Batman or Superman or the Knight Rider. Yeah. You know, so they get all excited about it, you know? Yeah, it's great. Yeah, it's fun. You need some interesting people. Nice, nice. So uh, what's like the, the oldest thing you've, you've had or still have in the store right now? Um, let's see. I don't, geez, stuff comes in and out so fast. Um, I had this really interesting thing from the 1930s. It was called the pigeon clock. <laughs> Some guy brought it in. I didn't know what it was. He sort of explained it to me. So back then, people loved to gamble even back in the day. But, you know, there wasn't a lot of things to gamble with or for, right? Yeah. So it was this clock. It was in this wooden case. And to make a long story short, so they'd send the pigeons out, like homing pigeons. You know, <laughs> that, that they, would, they would go a certain distance and come back. And people would bet on how fast they could do that, okay. right? So the clock was a timer to time the pigeons. It's, it's really, it's pretty intricate, you know, and you would win money if whoever got closest to the time and stuff like that. Yeah, it's the craziest thing. So that's probably the oldest thing in the store now, because it's, yeah. Wow. It's pretty crazy. Yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It doesn't really go with, with the whole pop culture thing, but I, I'm like, this is just too cool not to. It was a, it's a great conversation. Because everyone looks at it, they have no idea what it is. Although one guy did. He goes, oh, that's a pigeon racing clock. And I'm like, how do you know that? He goes, oh, my grandfather had one or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> it was nuts. Yeah. But, yeah. Well, that's really nice that, like, you know, you decided, like, you're retiring and instead of, you know, doing the traditional, well, I'm retiring, I yeah, go right. to Florida and call yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> you go ahead and you, st you open up a yeah. store in downtown and yeah. uh, wanting to be that place that people, people go to. Yes. And, and it's, you know, because I never opened, I didn't have, never had a store, I had no idea about retail. But it's, it's so much fun because it's, it's like families come in with the kids because I do a ton of like Pokemon cards, magic cards, like that stuff. So, you know, you have like little kids that are regulars now, you know, who, you know, come in and they talk to me and they trade cards and, you know, we chit chat about, you know, what's the newest Pokemon or what's the newest, you know, I have some Legos in there and stuff like that. You know, and the parents love it because they're like, oh, my God, I can't believe he's talking to an adult, you know, because <laughs> you can't go into Walmart and do that. You know, talk to some guy working at the toy department, you know what I mean? So, you know, they get a kick out of that stuff. So that yeah. part's fun, too. Yeah. Nice. And yeah. of all places, why did you pick here in Exeter? Um, well, I wanted a spot that was a downtown. So you, you're really limited to basically Newburyport, Portsmouth, and Exeter. Mm -hmm. um, Portsmouth was just too expensive on it. It was just crazy money to try to set up a shop down there. Mm -hmm. um, Newburyport, I don't think, I don't know why I didn't do Newburyport. It was probably, probably based on the same reason, maybe, you know? Um, so I was just, and at the time that I was looking, it was just an idea in my head. Like, I didn't really, it was like, oh, it'd be kind of fun, but, you know, let me look around. And then I was walking by when I, I told you earlier about the uh, next exit of jewelry, jewelry store. 
it was a sign in the window for rent. I'm like, oh, that's a sign. That's a sign I should go in and inquire about this. So I did, and that's how it started. You know, I started in that little, that little spot and eventually moved down to, you know, next to George and Phillips, but yeah. Nice. I'm like, yeah, that's cool. I mean, I didn't want to do the strip mall thing or somewhere else because I really wanted to be like part of like a community where, you know, I get to know people and people would just walk in off the street. Not because I, like, people will walk by and they look at the sign, mm -hmm. and they try to figure out what what is that? What's a pop culture store? And they'll look in the window and I'll watch them. <laughs> And sometimes they'd come up the steps and look in the door. And I'm like, I'm not doing experiments. Man. Just <laughs> stick your head in and see what's going on. Then they'll walk in. They'll be like, oh, my God. I never knew like, a place like this even existed. I'm like, yeah, come in. Walk around. See what you think. And like, that's like the cool thing for me. You know what I mean? It's just fun. You know? yeah. So yeah, that's kind of just how it started. It wasn't anything you know, crazy. But yeah. yeah, it's worked out really well. I've been there like eight years now, almost eight years. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, you build up this clientele of regulars that come in and look for th stuff, you know, you know. So. It kind of makes you like a detective searching for all those. Yes, that's true, right. I mean, some people have crazy requests, and I'm like, yeah, you're never going to find that. Yeah, can you find me the first appearance of Spider-Man? And I'm like, you know, on a comic book. I'm like, well, that's Amazing Fantasy 15. The last one sold for $4 million, so I'm probably not going to find that for you. <laughs> you know? It's true, you know. Comic books are, you know, they're a big deal. Like, people buy, sell them, trade them in the millions now. I've never had a book like that come in, but it does happen. Yeah. Yeah. I'm still waiting, though. I'm still waiting for Superman number one to walk through the door. <laughs> Probably not going to happen. There's just isn't that many of them, so, you know. But who knows? Maybe you never know. one day some guy will come in. Yeah, I mean, people have come in with expensive books, and I'm like, where'd you get this guy? It's like, oh, I had it as a kid. And you still have it from 1955 or 1960. Oh, yeah, you know, I just stuck it in a closet. I'm like, awesome. Yeah, want to sell it? <laughs> you know? And sometimes they do. Because, you know, I tell them, I said, listen, because we have price guides and stuff. And yeah. I said, you know, you can go online and look this book up. I'm going to tell you what the retail value of this book is. You know, it's a $2,500 book in this condition. If it was better, it'd be, you know, up, up, up. And I tell them up front, I said, I'll give you, you know, a percentage of that, you know, whatever that may be. And we try to make a deal on it. You know, he makes his money. You know, he paid 12 cents for the thing, What's, you know, at the time. He's like, oh, that'd be great. You know, and some people keep them because they want to pass them down or whatever. But yeah, you know, you, you know, but you got to be honest. You got to be upfront with people in the business like that, you know. And you can't tell them it's worth nothing and have it be worth, you know, crazy money. Because, yeah. you know, you just don't do that to people. But, yeah, you never know. Do you find, like, here, you know, like, people are uh, pretty friendly, like, being in this downtown setup, too. Like, <clears throat> after a while, like, when people start to get to know you, like, oh, hey, Joe. Oh, yeah, definitely, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I see him outside of the store, and people recognize me, like, in, you know, restaurants and stuff. Hey, it's the Krypton Company. You know, they may not know my name, but, you know, they'll know me from the store. Um, oh, yeah, definitely, because yeah. it's just, you know. I mean, that's the, the cool thing about the store is, um, I mean, you could be having a bad day, but when you walk into that, to my store, it's just, it's a pop culture store. It's not the Mayo Clinic. You're going in there because it's, you know, it's toys, it's comics, it's kind of, you know, it's bright, a lot of colors, kind of uplifting, you know what I mean? So, yeah. yeah. But yeah, I've, I've, I've met friends and stuff just through the store that I hang out with now, you know, collectors and things like that. We go to shows together, Comic Con, stuff like that. You know, I didn't know them before I opened the store, so, yeah. 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 And did you find setting it up where people around here helping you with that, like a landlord or? Um, yeah, I mean, you know, when I, when I, they just sold the building, so I actually have a new landlord. Um, but Burke Freeman, the guy that owned the building before, um, well, they just sold it. But, oh, yeah, I mean, they're great. It's like, what do you need? Because I didn't, I, it was, I had a lot of stuff. So I needed some storage like the, that I couldn't fit in the store. So he goes, listen, get down in the basement. There's a bunch of storage down there. He just let me put a bunch of stuff down there. He gave me a key I could go up and down, bring stuff in and out. Oh, yeah, it's great. Yeah. I get no complaints about any of that stuff. Yeah. You know, the people in town are great. You know, it's just been, it's been a really easy, really fun. That's what I was shooting for. Easy and fun. <laughs> no heavy lifting, you know. So, yeah. 
Worked out good. Yeah. yeah, it's nice. Yeah. Except maybe those life size models. <laughs> well, those, yeah. Well, that's a problem. Yeah. I mean, I do get stuff into where, you know, I hate to tell people, like, yeah, I just, there's no, I don't have room for it. You know, some guy wanted to bring in a, uh, you know, six and a half foot Iron Man statue. Like, Is full it size. Iron? <laughs> yeah, it's full size, like, I go, I love it, but, you know, I get a Spider Man in the window. I said, that's, that's about all I can handle right now. It was cool, though. Like, it was the whole thing with the, yeah, the whole, you know, Downey nice. Jr. look, yeah. But I'm like, yeah, I can't, I just no room for that. Sorry, buddy. Yeah. Plus, it was expensive. <laughs> uh, yeah. But yeah, I've gotten friendly with, you know, a bunch of the business owners and stuff, you know, about, you know, we chit chat about stuff once in a while, you know, how things are going and, you know, yeah. It's been working out pretty good. Yeah, nice little town. All right, Joe. Thank you again. You good? All right. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Yeah, of course. Yeah. And you heard at Exeter. If you would like to be in the spotlight or recommend somebody, you can always contact us at extvg at exeternh.gov. Thank you, and have a great day.